Thank you very much for logging on to Holy Health Radio. Your super duper radio station. My name is Alda Best Marco Mary Somoa. On this special, special edition of Mother's Day, we are grateful to God. We will not take life for granted. The program is Echoes of Grace right here, streaming live from Reynoldsburg, Ohio. Happy Mother's Day to all the women. We God, may God bless you and take you from glory to glory. Our CEO, Mr. Isaac Pinto, is the man in charge of our technical department today. Because I did tell you, he's the producer of this wonderful program. I want to wish two people a very wonderful Mother's Day. I want to wish my wife, Mrs. Juliet Somoa. Of course, Mrs. Joyce Somoa, my mom. Today, uh, the motivation for the week is going to be very brief. John chapter 3 verse 16 The Bible says For God so loved the world that he gave His only begotten son that whosoever believeth Should not perish but have everlasting life Should not perish That means there's, there's going to be a perishing There's going to be a day of accountability As human beings we are not on this side of the world for nothing we are accountable to God. We don't own ourselves. And that is why people can do things and it looks like they got away with it. I mean, as far as human beings are concerned, probably you got away with it. You could be so smart. But it's going to be a day that we are going to give records of everything that we did. We're going to give account. And that one you can never get away with anything. The day that everything that you did, the one that you did in secrecy, will come to the fore. Everybody is going to see it. Just like we go to school and we write exam, there's going to be an examination day. As we know, on examination day, everybody is supposed to be quiet. On that day, it will be to be God's turn to talk. Now you can boast, you can get away, you can do everything that you like. And it seems like you're on top. Nobody can just do anything to you. There are other places that you can even bribe the police. There are places that you can even bribe judges. But the great judge is coming, and when he appears, you'll never be able to bribe him. God has presented Jesus as a sacrifice, that if you accept his sacrifice, he was judged so that you will not be judged. He was sacrificed so that you will not be sacrificed. The Bible said that he said, I test on the cross. He was testy. So that you will not be thirsty in the lake of fire. You remember the rich man when he was in the in the fire when he was burning. He said he was testing. He was thirsty. One of the qualities, one of the attributes of those who are suffering in hell is that they are thirsty. Jesus Christ has tested so that you will not test. You're going to drink the the, 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 the water of uh, freedom, the water that is going to give you the freedom to live for Christ. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Right now, it's free. It's going to be a day that you didn't have the chance to make things right. People of God, tonight we are blessed. We are blessed to have a wonderful gentleman with us. Somebody who we all knew growing up, a little boy, and today is a big man. We are blessed to have Dr. Jeff Amwako with us here. Doc, you are welcome. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so you. very much for joining us here. On um, Echoes of Grace. Have you ever watched Holy Hills Radio before? I've watched, I've watched, uh, I've watched a couple of the interviews. Oh really? Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Wow, that's good. That's good. We are happy you take time to watch us. Uh, tonight we'll be talking about a whole lot of stuff. First of all, tonight is Mother's Day. So, what would you say about yeah. your mom? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to say a big, big Happy Mother's Day to my mom. She's working right now. What's her she, name? Uh, Cecilia, Miss Cecilia Chumesi. Um, Happy Mother's Day. If you're watching, listening, um, you know. All the sacrifices that you you've done over the years for us, all the the love, the prayers, um, you know, she'll be up at night um, praying while we're sleeping, and um, all the talks, all the lectures, everything. It didn't fall in deaf ears. Um, you know, we hope that from myself and my brothers as well. Hope that we made you proud and. Um, just really want to say happy Mother's Day to her. Wow, 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 wow. That was, that's emotional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and before I even go ahead with the other questions, I know you lost your dad growing up. Mm -hmm. And um, how, how, how did you cope? And how did that motivate you in life? 
Um, so, yeah, so I lost my dad when I was nine years old. Nine um, years? Yeah, so it was back in 2002. Um, honestly, so I remember everything. I remember, uh, I remember when I walked in and they told me, you know, um, the story of, or just what happened. Um, first, I remember they gave me an egg. I don't know why I remember that. Egg. They, <laughs> they gave you an egg? An egg, yeah. What was that going to do? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I didn't know if it was tradition or stuff, but for some, <laughs> for some reason, when that, when, when certain things in your life happen, uh-huh. you just remember everything about, about what goes on. So, um, I remember, and then everyone started crying and then I just started crying and, um, yeah. So, I mean, since then, um, I think it's. It's been it was it was difficult initially I would say mm-hmm. um, just because there would be some times when you're you're um, you're just sitting there and then you're just like just kind of dazed and you're just out of the moment you're not really you're not really thinking straight you're not really to yourself but I think that over time um, I think time has been really helpful has been really really big in in um, helping like heal wounds I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, Initially, it was hard to talk about, but it's something that I'm, you know, I'm really open. And I'm really um, uh, free to talk about with anyone who has like any questions or anything like that. Um, and I think that also, like my mom, she's been really, she's been really big in in um, um, keeping like the family really close uh, together as well too. So. Wow! 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 Yeah. So was your dad part of the reason you went to medical school? Yeah. So he was. Uh, so initially, so I always wanted to go to medical school. Mm-hmm. Um, um, definitely, when he died, I. Um, I wanted to help other people, um, people who are sick. Um, um, I really wanted to to be able to be a source of of positivity, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the reasons. So I wanted to do emergency medicine, and that's one of the reasons why I want to do emergency medicine. Because when you're in a when you're in an emergency room, no one goes to the emergency room on a good day. No one is happy to go to the right. emergency room. Right. No one is like, let's go there for fun. You know, people. It's usually a really bad day for some people to go there. So um, while they're there on their bad day, on their worst days, mm-hmm. um, I want to help people um, you know, while they're, they're, they're going through a difficult time in their life. Wow. Yeah. Your mom must be very proud of you. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Auntie Adelaide Asante, that is my, uh, my, my mom, Sewa from Cincinnati. She says, good evening, son. Hi. Yeah. Do- hi, Dr. Jeff. It's Auntie Sewa, Cincinnati. I'm so uh, proud of you. Congratulations. Auntie. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Everybody is proud of yeah. you. And, and, and I knew you were part of Trumpet of Christ. How did that impact you? Um, Trump, um, Auntie Ivy and the Trumpet of Christ was just so big in, in, in my life. Um, well, first of all, I'm not a singer, and that's not my that's not my ministry. But it's not even about the fact that you're singing or not singing or whatnot. I think it's just more so that um, you know bringing a group of kids together mm-hmm. um, and and helping them to achieve something together. Um, you know, there'd just be so many times where we would look forward to like singing at a convention or you know singing at you know in front of everyone and stuff like that. Um, I think it gave people something to do on Saturday. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> At least. Yeah, it gives you something something to do on Saturday. You're not, you know, you're not doing something that you shouldn't be doing. You know, you're at church, you're hearing, you're listening to um, to uh, gospel music, mm-hmm. you're, you're learning gospel music. Um, so for me personally, it's not necessarily the actual singing, but what, what it did for me um, um, outside of that. Wow. Yeah. Wow, so... Um, that means it has had positive impact. So, yeah. what are you going to tell those people who are not part of it now? Uh, to part of Trump of Christ. Of Christ yeah. oh, I think, I think if you're a parent, you should definitely consider having putting your kids in into the Trumpet of Christ, um, especially when they're young, and have them kind of grow into, into it. Sometimes when I'm at church and I'm watching them perform, and they were performing at the Easter Convention actually, and I was just so amazed because I was like, there's no way I could do that job that you know Auntie Abby does, and and you know, anyone who's been the, the choir director, especially of kids, so many kids of so many different ages right, and stuff like right. that. Um, you know, the kids all learn to grow together and they become friends and things of that nature. So um, I think that if, you know, if you're, if, you're, if you're not in Trumpet of Christ, you should definitely get into the Trumpet of Christ. I think it's really, it's really something that's important um, for your development as, wow. a, as a kid. That's good. That's good. I know medical school is very hard. Mm-hmm. And for you to graduate at this tender age, mm-hmm. how were you able to stay focused with all the distractions that we have 
how were you able to keep your focus at, at, and come to this stage? I think that, for, for me personally, I think that it comes two ways. I think uh, the first part is that um, there's internal internal focus, internal motivation, internal drive to, mm-hmm. to succeed and to do well and fear of failure. Um, I fear guess. of failure is very important. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Yeah. That's one thing that keeps yeah. me going. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, um, and then the, the other part is that when you're in medical school, you're around people who are very, very smart. You know, they're the cream of the crop. They're mm-hmm. the top. They're all valedictorians. They're all, you know, very smart people. So you want to you want to keep up with them. You know, you, it's not, our school isn't competitive, but you want to show that, you know, I belong, that I'm, right. I'm here. Like, um, and then also the last, actually the last part about it is your future patients too. So everything that you're learning in medical school, you're, or most things that you're learning, you're going to use in the future to help someone. So it's not that you're learning something for no reason. It's actually going to help someone someday. Mm-hmm. So that, that's also a really, really big reason why. Um, that keeps you focused in what you're learning on a day-to-day basis. Wow. Yeah. For those who join us, this is Holy Health Radio. The program is Echoes of Grace. And tonight, we have our own Dr. Jeff Amwakon here. He's telling us stories about how he went through medical school and at that side of his life. And, um, so which area did you specialize in medicine? So I chose emergency medicine. Emergency medicine. Mm-hmm. And why emergency medicine? <laughs> you want money? <laughs> no, it's not about the money. I, I think if you, if you want money, you shouldn't go to medicine. It's, um, but I chose emergency medicine because of the work that you do. I think that, like I said, you know, you're working with people who are just having a really bad day and you mm-hmm. really want to help them. Um, for me, I really like um, emergencies. I like seeing anything and everything. So you can see a headache in one room. The next room is a homeless person. The next room is like a U.S. senator or something like that. Um, the next room is someone who got in a fight. So it's, you know, you're seeing something different, new, and you're always being challenged. Um, I also like challenges as well, too. So you're always being challenged every single shift, every single person that you see. So yeah, You don't like simple things. <laughs> I like challenges. And um, and are you not scared? I mean, dealing with people with blood, people whose bodies have been torn apart, and people. I mean, are you are you are you not are you not? Scared? No, I I I, pref- I I not that I prefer, but like it gets me going. Like you know, I, I don't like sitting down and you know mm. just writing all day. I like getting up and doing things with my hands and talking to mm. people and and you know seeing different things. And I think that's why emergency medicine fits me so well. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. And, I uh, mean, how has your faith impacted you all through medical school? I mean, you've been in school for about nine years mm-hmm. after high school. Wow, mm-hmm. that was a long time. Yes. <laughs> how has your faith kept you focused? Yeah. I think that, uh, I think that in, in college it's really important, um, even in medical school too. Um, but because when you move away from your parents mm-hmm. and um, you're by yourself in like a college environment, um, there's no one there who can tell you what to do. There's no one there to say, hey, go shower, go do this, go read your Bible, go do this. Um, you're by yourself. So all the, everything that you've learned from when you were young, it's, it's, like, a, it's like a test. Everything you've learned has, can now be applied into mm-hmm. your life. Reality. And, and how you do is, I mean, it's all 100% based off of you. So um, I think that it keeps you grounded and it keeps you, you're able to pick out, you know, who to stay away from, um, people who are, you know, good friends, people who, you know, maybe you shouldn't kind of communicate with them as much or whatever the case may be. But, um, yeah, I think that that's, that's uh, for me at least, that's the biggest thing that's really helped me with in terms of my faith wow. in, in school. Well, was there a time that you were tempted to quit? Because I know it, it, it hasn't been very easy like that, as easy as it looks. In, in medical school, I never... <laughs> I never wanted to quit in medical school, but in undergrad, there was so there was a couple times when I was like, I don't think that, I don't think medicine is for me. Um, and what so what happened was that you know I was I, I was having like a really difficult week that week, and um, you know I was just like I don't I don't know if I can do this. It's you know four more years after I graduate college, and then three more years after tr- of training or whatnot. It sounds like it's too much too much it's too much so then what i did was i started looking i started looking up other like job t- 
type things that I could <laughs> okay. do. This is when I'm in school. I'm in college still. Okay. And I looked up a whole bunch of different job things, and I, I even started applying to other. <laughs> <laughs> I even started applying, and then I remember. So I called my mom and I told her I was like, I don't know if I want to do this. I want to do something shorter or easier. I want to go to like PA school or something like that. And my mom said that okay, I'll I'll uh, I'll let you talk to one of my good friends in New York. Um, and I talked to him on the phone, and he was like, Jeffrey, um, you know, I know that, you know, you want to pick something easier, um, you could, but think of the end of the line, you know, like, these short years that you're sacrificing now will be worth it, you know, way down. Um, so don't look at the now, look at the big picture. Um, and I, I think that that phone, I mean, that phone conversation I had with him was really, it was powerful. really, yeah, it was really, really powerful for me, um, because it got me thinking, you know, um, What's one extra year, if you know, in the long term? Right. What's another two years in the long term? So, um, I don't necessarily think about the, the the years in terms of medical school because it's like you said, nine years since since mm -hmm. high school. That's a that's a long time, and um, yeah. So now that I'm done, I mean, it feels like it came by fast, but right. like, sometimes while you're in it, it feels like it's going so slow. But when you're done, you're like, yeah. wow. Then you, you become already. proud of you yeah. yourself, right? And um. I mean, at medical school, you are mixing up with intellectuals and all kind of people who really don't believe in religion. They don't see religion. Some of them don't even believe, believe in God at all. Has there been temptation for you to give up on your Christian faith? No, and I think that that's, that's just a product of, of, the, of the environment that I grew up in. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when you're young, you go to church because your, your parents, mom, yeah. yeah, your parents are going to church. Um, but over time, you start to kind of develop your own relationship with Christ. Um, and there, I mean, I've never felt like I've never felt like I needed to give up on my religion or anything like that. Um, if anything, I think that medical school has made me think that I need to, you know, be even stronger in my faith. Because, I mean, sometimes you think about the human body and how complex it is. You're just like. Yeah. How can you, yeah. I mean, how, how can you so, believe that yeah, it came by itself? Yeah, it's just, everything is just so, um, so well structured and, yeah. and everything, so. And, and sometimes I don't understand some of these people. I mean, even, I mean, uh, common sense should tell you that there's a, a God somewhere. How, I mean, the, the whole thing is so organized. Mm -hmm. If it was by accident, it shouldn't be as organized as it is. Mm -hmm. Even human life, I, I mean, the little that we can even see. The, the, the ordinary man can see mm -hmm. how the human mind even works, how you can remember stuff and all that. And yet, and this shows it's spiritual. Mm -hmm. It shows, uh, I mean, those who are going through those kind of stuff are some, in some kind of spiritual bondage. Mm -hmm. And um, it, that's why we need to yeah, pray. Yeah. Uh, pray. And you said you have a praying mom too. Oh, yeah. That, that, that played, <laughs> yeah. because you could have been convinced by somebody. Yeah, yeah. Some professor could have come in and told you yeah. this one was worked by, you see, Darwin said that, yeah. some big bang, and then so and so, and probably could, be, could have been convinced. Mm -hmm. And then uh, giving, giving up on your Christian faith, but the prayer worked. Mm -hmm. Wow. And were you a prayerful person yourself? Yeah, so, I, I mean, I've always, not like my mom. My mom <laughs> I mean, my mom, she's, you know, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., she is, you know, wow. she's praying. Um so I mean, I'm not I'm not on her level I, I, by no means, but um, you know I, I still you know every single day you mm -hmm. know short prayers here and there, um, you know like before you go to work in the morning you just pray real quick like you know God um, anybody that I meet today let you know let you work through me you know so mm -hmm. that um, you know I can be healing hands to you know to my patients and so. Yeah, so not like my mom, but like you know, I still try to I try to hold my own. Wow, yeah. wow. So you want to, you are aspiring to be like your mom? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. And and yeah. and uh, do you do you get time? Do you make time to read your Bible? Yeah. So it's I would say that it it's difficult. Um, to be honest with you, it's difficult just because, especially in school, it's just about like time. But I think that. I think that um, what's important is time management and how you kind of block out your time for certain things that mm -hmm. are important to you. Right. Um, that's not to say that it can't be done, but I would say that it's a little bit more difficult just because, I mean, there are some days, I'll, tell, I'll be honest with you, there are some days where I wake up, I study the entire day, I eat, I shower, study the rest of the day, and then I go to sleep. Like, that's the entire, that's the entire day. Um, especially when I'm taking, like, boards and stuff like that. Um, so, like, 
it can be trying at times. Yeah, but making time. But yeah, that's the that's that's what I would say is the hard part about everything in, in school is making time for things. And talking about reading your Bible, what is your favorite Bible verse? So my favorite would be it would be Hebrews. It would be like the whole chapter of Hebrews. But I prefer I specifically like Hebrews eleven one. Um By it faith. talks about faith, yeah. Um but then the rest of the chapter gives examples about how different people have been have been um, challenged by faith, yeah, yeah, by faith. And I think that my life personally has been like, if I were to use two words to describe my life, it would probably be faith and favor because, I mean, I have like so many stories of things that, you know, that shouldn't have went my way, but somehow, some way, like, you know, I went out on a limb. I went out by faith. Um, turns out that, you know, things just came in perfect and just worked. Wow. Yeah. Your just, modest prayer. Yeah. You said so many things. Yeah. Give me two. Um, like two examples of, yeah. okay, so mm-hmm. let me see. So the first one, um, let me see which one. Yeah, so many. Yeah, no, no, so, <laughs> so let's, let me put it this way. So the place that I'm going to right now for training, mm-hmm. um, so the process in terms of where you, of where you go, it's a really comp- complicated process, but mm-hmm. you basically, you're applying for an interview, you're applying for a job. Um, so you apply to all these different places that you want to go to and, the uh, the place that I wanted to end up at, initially I was waitlisted. So they, they had already filled up their, um, the people that they were going to interview. So mm-hmm. I, I was waitlisted. And then, um, so one day I was at a different interview, actually, and I was like, you know, I really, I really enjoyed this program, the one that I want to go to. Mm-hmm. So I said, let me email them real quick. So I emailed, the, I emailed one of the coordinators, and I said, you know, I'm really interested in your program. Um, I... You know, I really like what you have to offer. Um, can you tell me that the dates that you have available for interviews, just so I can clear my schedule if anything opens up? Mm-hmm. It was just, you know, just an uh, email just to see what would happen. And then she emailed me back, and she said, um, you know, just because, you know, you were so, you you know, you came out right. and, and, and emailed me, um, we're going to offer you an interview right now. What, like, whenever, whatever date is open. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where I ended up. Wow. Yeah, so that's why I ended up. Wow. Um, so, I, I mean, I, that... that. So many things. Yeah. Give me another one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> another one. So, uh-huh. uh, so I don't know if you've heard of, like, the MCAT. I think so. You've heard the MCAT. So, it's a medical college admissions test. It's like, it's like the Pinto, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's an admissions test that you yeah. take to go into medical school. Um, so, like I said, so I did four years of college. Um, and then I had taken the MCAT um, two times, but I didn't do as well as I wanted to. It was okay, but it wasn't great. Um, but I, you know, something told me still apply. Just apply with the score that you have. So I applied, and um, I got into so I got into two schools. Um, I was able to get into two medical mm-hmm, schools, wow. um, but then I also got the Ohio State post baccalaureate program. So it's like a post bac program in which you take a year of classes and then. Once you complete requirements, um, a certain GPA and a certain score, then you can go into medical school. Mm-hmm. So I have two and like two um, guaranteed acceptances, and then there's Ohio State, which is like a maybe, a possibly. Right. Um, so, I mean, normally, probably people would probably pick the one that's a guaranteed acceptance. But mm-hmm. I was like, you know, there's something about Ohio State that I, like I really, you know, I really feel like you know, if I go out on faith, if I go out on a limb, that you know, I think that I would be better here. So um, I delayed the other ones, and I and I did the post back the post back program. Mm-hmm. And in the in this program, you have one chance to take this test, the the, the entrance test, just one chance, and you have to have a certain score. Um, so my friends and I went to take the test, um, and then during the test day, you know, we had studied for like five six months for this test. Like we're staying up until one a.m. You know we're you know we're we're studying really hard and then the, finally the test day comes, and as we're taking the test the computer starts like shutting down on mm. us yeah wow and and we're every time we would click next the time that um, the time of the the test would go down more than it was supposed to mm-hmm. so instead of going down like <laughs> one second it would go down like thirty seconds <laughs> so every single time you push next like you're cutting a lot of time off so we talked to the coordinators are like what's going on like how is this happening we have one chance to pass this test this is the day that 
One chance. Yeah, this is the day that this is happening. And they're saying, oh, it's a server issue. All of the eastern half of the United States are dealing with this issue. But, I mean, that doesn't matter. Like, this is our one yeah. chance to take this test. I mean, but still, by the grace of God, you know, we all still passed. Um, we all still did better than we needed to. And, and because of that, that's how I ended up at Ohio State. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, God has been good. Yeah. And, I mean, some of these things, if, if you could explain then it could have been by your efforts. Yeah. But God does certain things in our life. And that is why sometimes, you, 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 you agree with me, that is why sometimes God allows us to go into tough situations. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, how is he going to demonstrate his yeah. power? Yeah. I believe that every Christian will come to his Red Sea, mm -hmm. just like the Israelites. Mm -hmm. If you are going to follow God, he's going to put you in some uncomfortable position, mm -hmm. and then he's going to get you out. Mm -hmm. And that becomes your testimony. Mm -hmm. Look at the guy in John chapter 9. He says, I was blind, but now I see. And you could obviously see that people who, were, who had doctorates in divinity, doctorates in legality, they couldn't challenge him. Because mm -hmm. this is someone who is talking from experience. Mm -hmm. So even though you might, have, you might be a professor in whatever field, if somebody has experience, he's better than you. Because right. he knew that he was blind, now he can see. Right. So he doesn't need anybody to lecture him. He can just outwit you when it comes to argument. Mm -hmm. So I always say the man with experience it's not at the mercy of the man with an argument. Mm -hmm. Someone who has experienced God. So this one is your experience. Mm -hmm. Right now, if somebody should come and try to convince you, there's nothing the person can right. tell you. Because you've really tasted, Tell you've touched, yep. you've had, I mean, hands on, on what really, I mean, how God can take people from one glory to, I mean, mm -hmm. we are so proud of you yeah. as a church, and uh, we are proud of you also uh, as friends. How, have you considered being a mentor? Or for instance, my nephew, uh, AJ Sumua, my niece, Rachel Pinto, they are just on the verge of going to school. Have you considered being a mentor to some of these young ones? Yeah, that's that's one of that's like one of the passions that I have also too. Right. Um, when I was in medical school, we had a program called ND Camp. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a high schooler, I guarantee I think that you should definitely apply to it. So right. it's like a program where high school students who are interested in medicine specifically mm -hmm. and who are you know very smart, they have really good um, test taking uh, abilities, but they may not have the resources necessarily, right. or they may not know doctors, they may not have doctors in their family, mm -hmm. kind of like me growing up. Mm -hmm. um, they're able to come to Ohio State. Um, these are high school students. They apply. Um, they stay at Ohio State for about three weeks, two, mm -hmm. three weeks or so. Um, they take medical classes just like we do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, 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 um, they see patients, like stand, fake patients, just like we do. They learn how to talk mm -hmm. to patients. Um, they work with cadavers, so like dead bodies, and they see like you know real human organs and all of that. Wow! Um, so it's a it's a program that um, that I was involved in um, that I really really liked, and I think that uh, I really like working with the youth in terms of people who want mm -hmm. to come into medicine because there's there's where there's such a minorities in medicine right. is is so. Um, there needs to be more. Like, there needs to be more minorities in medicine. Um, your patients, I mean, will appreciate if you look like your doctor. Mm -hmm. If your doctor looks like you. Right. I mean, um, and I think that, I mean, it, it's difficult sometimes when you're in class and, you know, you're the only one that looks like yourself. And I think that, you know, we need to push more, um, more of us towards medicine um, and just try to kind of, or get more people in medicine and, and make it more diverse, kind of like the the country looks like overall. Yeah, but um, Holy Health Radio, I'll be talking to my boss. We should start, uh, we, I mean, we have plans to start a mentorship program, mm -hmm. and we would love you to be part of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. At least, not just for those who are studying medicine. Mm -hmm. People need to be motivated. Yeah. It's not easy to stay focused. Yeah. Life can be very challenging, mm -hmm. whereby you go and write an exam and you fail, mm -hmm. an exam that you, think, you thought probably were going to do well. And then you fail. Mm -hmm. Because I'm very passionate when it comes to the youth. You know that already, mm -hmm. right? Uh -huh. So we should find ways of uh, being there. At least if somebody sees you, he hears the name Amuako. Mm -hmm. knows a Ghanaian minority mm -hmm. who has I mean, been able to achieve it. And um, I heard you achieve it with distinction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you did very well. Yeah, did very yeah well. let me put it that way. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so I mean, take it very seriously yeah. and uh, let's help the youth. Why, talking about helping the youth, why is it that uh, at least a, a good number of them are not able to stay on target? You see the person studying, uh, um, let's say, uh, business administration. The next time he's into psychology. The next, I mean, why are people not able to just stay focused? Some of them even drop out entirely. I think one of the biggest reasons why is um, 
I mean, it, it's, I don't think you can point to one single reason why. Um, I think that mentorship um, is one of the biggest reasons why. Seeing someone who mm -hmm. is where you want to be right. um, and asking them, how can I get to where you are? Or how can I even get past you? Mm -hmm. How can I even you know, do better than what you're, you were able to accomplish? Um, having, having that proper mentorship, I think, is really important. And right. I think that when you come into college, not everyone, not everyone has that initially. So, you know, you're always, you're a little bit confused about what you want to do. You know, I don't know if I want to do business or I want to start pre-med or I want to do nursing or this and this mm -hmm. and that. Mm -hmm. um, along the same lines, I think that time management is, is something, it's just, it, if there was one time skill that I learned, big. it's huge. It's, yeah. it's so, so big, especially in college. I think that's what separates like a high school student from like a, a, college. a an adult, mm -hmm. like how to manage your time. Um, because I mean, when you're in high school, for me at least, when I'm in high school, I come, I go to school, I come home, I play sports, or whatever. I come home, that's it. Like I can do my homework in like ten minutes, and I can even do it at school. Mm -hmm. So I come home and I have the entire rest of the, the day to myself, so I don't have to worry about anything. Right. But when you're in college, like I said, you know, there's no one there. Um, you go to school, and you may have the rest of the day to yourself, but you need to review what you learned earlier. Right. You need to review what you learned in other classes. You have you need to review what you're learning for the next class. You, there's so many things that you need to that you need to do, but you don't realize that. Um, so I think that time management skills um, is something that you learn in college, and because sometimes people learn it a little bit too late, and they're not mm -hmm, they're not mm -hmm. at that time they're already they would have made so many mistakes. Yeah. And that is why I'm so big on you mentoring some of uh, the young ones we have. I mean, uh, their parents, their uncles might talk, but sometimes they feel like uncles and parents talk too much. <laughs> they just talk. Yeah, so yeah. they don't. Yeah, yeah, they don't really listen. Yeah. yeah. So people like you who are there, and they, and I mean, you you would even be able to relate to them better, mm -hmm. having gone to this. I mean, high school, and you know some of the th how they are even thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at least. Um, being part of a mentorship thing would really help, mm -hmm. at least on email basis. If oh, it's yeah. not call, I know you are uh, such a busy person, so please pick it up, oh, yeah. pick it up, Absolutely. and help the young one because most of them they go to school and staying focused, mm -hmm. staying right on track. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, yeah. even for adults. I mean, yeah. keeping focused, like you're talking about time management, mm -hmm. it's so hard. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you are distracted. You, are, you, you pick your book, and that's NBA. You watch it a little bit. We go to social media. Mm -hmm. You come here. Yeah. It's not just, it's not easy. Yeah. So talking about that, how are you influencing your younger siblings? <laughs> um, because now <laughs> you're looking at you as a big brother. They probably think I'm annoying. But like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they probably think I'm annoying. But I mean, I think, it, I think it's just, you know, staying on them, making sure that they're on, they're on target, checking in with them. I think it's just really important because I think that, Sometimes as parents, or specifically Ghanaian parents, because you're working so hard, you're mm -hmm, working two mm -hmm, jobs, mm -hmm. maybe three jobs, you're not able to always catch up or realize what your children are doing, mm -hmm. you know, what they're up to, right. what struggles they're going, like they're going on with in school. Exactly. Um, it may not even be academic. It may be with friends. Yep, emotional. Um, it may be emotional, maybe yep. social, maybe mental, psychological. Mm -hmm. um, just asking those questions. I, just being present, yeah. I guess is one of the biggest things that I think that parents can do um, for their kids um, right now. Just, you know, hey, you know, I know you had a test coming up or something. How did that go? Um, you know, just talking to them, having small conversations like that. Um, it helps them open up a little bit more to you about, you know, some of the difficulties that they're going, that they're going with as well, too. Wow. And I think that also, so I think that, like, everyone has a different gift, and I think that helping them, being supportive of what their gift is, mm -hmm. I think is also very... Yeah, not trying very, to push them into medicine. Yeah, not... Because medicine... I, to be honest with you, medicine isn't for everyone. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, medicine mm -hmm. isn't something that you can just, like, pick up and say, I'm just going to go into medicine and just do it. It's, I mean, it's such a lifelong commitment. Um, and there's... It's so delayed. The gratification is so delayed. Right. Like, I'm 26. I haven't, I haven't had, like, a job job yet. I mean, mm -hmm. I've had summer jobs, but not a real job. A lot of my friends, you know, married, have kid or starting to have kids and stuff like that. Um, so there are a lot of things that you push back when you're doing medicine um, that you have to kind of realize ahead of time what you're getting yourself into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but not everyone is destined to do medicine. Not everyone is supposed to do nursing. I can't do what a nurse does. A nurse can't do what I really? do. Really? You I, can't I, do what a nurse does? I, I mean, I can't do what a nurse does. I can't do what a pharmacist does. Um, we're just like what they study and what they do is just so different. Mm. Um, 
So, you know, their gifts is not necessarily my gifts. Right. So with parents, I think it's important to support whatever gifts they have, right. but not necessarily, you can push them somewhere, but not necessarily force them that mm -hmm. way. You can mm -hmm. kind of help them, um, but let them make mistakes as long as you're there to kind of catch them and, right. and help them right. as well. You don't have to uh, stress them yeah. to do something because you wish, you, uh, that is what you wish. Yeah, yeah I, know. You I, know. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, so I mean, the, we are going to make the mentorship thing a very big thing, mm -hmm. at least on email basis. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will be linking you up mm -hmm. with uh, some of the names. Mm -hmm. So if you see any emails coming from them, then you know it's the Holy Hills link mm -hmm. and uh, Rachel, yeah. AJ, and all those people. And apart from that, you mentor them when it comes to, I mean, social life. Mm -hmm. It's not just academic. Mm -hmm. Sometimes some of us, when we talk, they feel like, yeah, you don't oh, crowd, yeah, <laughs> I mean, you people, I mean, yeah, they just get bored with you. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and they feel like, Oh, Ghana, then are they Yeah. You think yeah, we are in Ghana? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you think we are in Ghana? <laughs> we are here in America, so yeah. please. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I understand. So you people will be more, uh, you, you'll be more influential mm -hmm. than some of us can be to them. Mm -hmm. And Holy Hills will pick that up mm -hmm. and uh, bring in more professionals, link them with some of these youth. So it's going to be a really big thing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Bishop, Bishop, Honorable Carrington says, please, the name is Dr. Jeff. Ousu Amwako. Is that true? <laughs> that's okay. Name, yeah. Because he is also Ousu, so <laughs> you want to be sure. Okay. Yeah. And he says, may God continue to be with you. Okay. You. Any last words before we wrap up? Because I'm going to have another blockbuster interview. We are going to talk about rapture. We are going to talk about judgment. We are going to talk about so many deep stuff. And we have our own King David. King David, I know. He's getting ready. He's going to be fireworks. So tell a friend to tell a friend to join us. It's, it's going to be scary because there's a lot of things that he's going to expose to us tonight. So watch out for part two of our interview. Any final words, please? No, I mean, thank you for having me. Uh, also, I just want to say thank you. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out mm -hmm. there. Um, all the mothers, grandmothers who are all very appreciated. Um, any student that is, you know, wanting to go into medicine, just use me as inspiration. That's I, right. I, I'm not the type of person that likes attention. Mm -hmm. I'm more reserved, more quiet. But, I mean, just the reception that I've received throughout this entire process has been really overwhelming. Um, and I'm starting to realize more that it's it's bigger than me. It's not necessarily, it's not what I want, but it's, I'm, I'm starting to realize that, you know, I'm like more of like, a face to help other people, right. a source of inspiration for right. someone. Like who, the Indians. You, you, you can have Dr. Patel, like 100. Yeah. Yes, Dr. Patel. Yeah. I don't know why Dr. Patel's, <laughs> the, the Patel's like to be doctor. <laughs> because yeah. they encourage each other. Yeah. They encourage That's people. So, they yeah. want, they push. I mean, yeah. and that is one thing Ghanaians should pick up. Yeah. And Holy Hills, we are going to pick it up. I'm yeah. serious. Absolutely. We are really going to pick it up where we will not be at the forefront. You guys are going to be at the yeah. forefront. Yeah. Like you, David, and all those kind of young people who are coming up. Yeah. You just link them up with people. Yeah. Not We shouldn't necessarily be in the same field, mm -hmm. but the ability to let them know that it can happen. Yeah. Just I to mean, see someone do it. Do it's, it. It's yeah. just really yeah. helpful. Yeah. yeah. So... Dr. Mwako, Dr. Yeah. Usa Mwako, we are so <laughs> appreciating. You so much, God bless yeah. you so yeah. much. God bless you Thank so you. much. And um, may God take you from glory to glory. This is Holy Health Radio. The program is Echoes of Grace. My name is Elder Bestman Mary Soma. Mucho gracias, amigos. See you next week. <laughs>